Good morning, everybody. This is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center. It's just about 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, September 20th, 2022, where uh, it's looking a look at the overview here in the Atlantic. Things are pretty busy. We have Hurricane Fiona, a major hurricane centered just near the Turks and Caicos Islands, uh, continuing to affect those areas, the southeastern Bahamas, with some residual rainfall over Hispaniola and even Puerto Rico. We have newly formed Tropical Depression 8 up here in the central North Atlantic that's expected to become a tropical storm and move generally in the direction of the Azores over the next few days. We also have another disturbance we're watching here to the east of the Windward Islands that now has a high chance of formation over the next five days, and we'll talk about that system in a little bit. But first, we'll start off with Fiona, major hurricane, category three storm, centered just to the northwest of Grand Turk. You can see there's some hints of a warm spot, an eye trying to reform in the infrared satellite imagery. But the Turks and Caicos right now are getting hammered with hurricane conditions. You can see additional rainfall of four to eight inches in those islands, creating flooding and also storm surge of five to eight feet above normal tide levels that will be affecting those islands through the day today. The good news is, is that Fiona is gradually starting to move northward away from those islands. So by tonight and into tomorrow, we should start to see conditions improve there. We are still seeing residual rainfall over portions of the Dominican Republic and over Puerto Rico, where we could see storm total rainfall amounts as high as 20 inches in the eastern portions of the Dominican Republic and 20 to 30 inches across Puerto Rico, looking at additional rainfall amounts today of generally one to two, maybe three or four inches across these general areas. Also also seeing tropical storm conditions ongoing in portions of the southeastern Bahamas, one to three inches of rainfall affected, as expected there. As I mentioned, uh, Fiona right now is moving north-northwest at nine, centered about 40 miles to the north-northwest of Grand Turk. Here's the forecast for the next five days. We're expecting to see Fiona turn uh, northward and then north-northeastward as it moves across the western Atlantic, it's passing uh, near or just west of Bermuda Thursday night into Friday morning, and then accelerating very quickly to the north, and that will bring Fiona near Atlantic Canada this week, near and over portions of Atlantic Canada this weekend. We are expecting Fiona to continue to strengthen, uh, perhaps up to Category 4 intensity here in the next couple of days. And then as the peak winds decrease a little bit as Fiona moves up here into the, the higher latitudes, the storm's going to grow larger in size. So it's going to be a tremendously large area of impacts in terms of wind, rain, and potentially storm surge in portions of Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and up into Atlantic Canada this weekend in addition to the potential for impacts on Bermuda as we get later into this week. Um, this is the time of arrival of the sustained tropical storm force winds. The most likely time of arrival you can see in Bermuda here is going to be late Thursday into Thursday night, and then in portions of Atlantic Canada, Friday night into Saturday. And, and these colors are showing the probability of tropical storm force winds is up to about 80% in Bermuda, because again, Fiona is going to be a large hurricane with a big wind field. And there's about a 20% chance of hurricane force winds in Bermuda. Higher chances are a little farther west near the forecast path of the center of Fiona, but certainly enough uncertainty that everybody in Bermuda wants to pay attention to this storm over the next few days. Uh, we could have watches issued for Bermuda as soon as later today or tonight, and rainfall about one to three inches expected in those areas. The uh, impacts for Atlantic Canada will come into better focus later this week, but this is certainly a, a, a storm you want to pay attention to there. Uh, in terms of rip currents and the marine impacts, this image here on my left is a forecast of the significant wave height field associated with Fiona Valid on Friday. This area of pink here are significant wave heights above 50 feet. So Fiona is going to have a huge wave field that's going to expand and impact much of the western Atlantic Basin. And as those waves propagate toward the U.S. East Coast, they're going to result in dangerous surf and rip current conditions. We already have a moderate risk of rip currents in effect from portions of South Florida up through the Carolinas and even into portions of New England. These uh, rip current risks will increase uh, in scope and in, in magnitude as we go later into the week. So we could see very dangerous surf and rip current conditions across much of the U.S. East Coast later this week and this weekend. So if you're planning to go to the beach, please check the surf conditions, look for any warning flags, and pay attention to any advice you're given by lifeguards or local officials. We don't want to lose people in the ocean from a storm passing off the U.S. East Coast. Uh, now we'll switch gears to their next system we're watching, the system here in, to the east of the Windward Island now has a high chance of formation over the next five days. We're expecting it to move across the Windward Islands and into the uh, eastern and central Caribbean Sea. And we, uh, you can see the shower and thunderstorm activity associated with the system has gotten better organized since yesterday. It's moving quickly off to the west at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. And we are expecting a tropical depression to form by the time it gets into the Caribbean Sea. So this is a system that folks in the Windward Islands are going to want to pay attention to in the next couple of days as it moves across them. You could see heavy rainfall, some gusty winds, and every 
everyone in the Caribbean is going to want to pay attention to this system as conditions do appear favorable for the system to go on and develop more as it moves into the Caribbean later this week and this weekend. So that's the latest here at the National Hurricane Center. Please stay tuned for more updates. I'm Mike Brennan.